Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Homefront, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. I'm Mark Martin. U.S. troops have been seen driving through northern Iraq after crossing the border from Syria following President Trump's orders of removal from the country. U.S. forces in Syria have mostly consolidated in one base in the east of the country before moving into Iraq. Following the withdrawal, the U.S. intends on keeping only one base in the southeast close to Syria's border with Jordan. U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper said troops will stay near Syria's eastern oil fields during the U.S. pullout, which will take weeks. We have troops in towns in south and northeast Syria that uh, are located next to the oil fields. Uh, the troops in those towns are not in the present phase of withdrawal. The present phase of withdrawal from northeast Syria involves those troops uh, up along the border, if you will, principally at the Kobani LZ at this point in time. So uh, that, as I said yesterday, this withdrawal will take weeks, not days. Uh, until that time, our forces will remain in the towns that are located near the oil fields. The purpose of those forces, a purpose of those forces, working with the SDF, is to deny access to those oil fields by ISIS and others who may benefit from their revenues that could be earned. President Trump says he always takes his decisions with the military seriously because writing letters home to families whose loved ones were killed in the line of duty is, quote, the toughest thing he has to do, and he wants to make sure their sacrifices are worth it. I meet parents. It's not a pleasant thing. It's the most unpleasant thing I do. Most unpleasant thing I do. When I see that big cargo plane open and I see those coffins get rolled off, or when I go over to Walter Reed Hospital where the doctors are incredible, by the way, Saving people that could have never been saved even five years ago. You know that. Uh, but those people are horribly wounded. Horribly, horribly wounded. Wounded warriors. Uh, it's the toughest thing I do. Toughest thing is sending letters. I send many letters home to parents, and I speak to parents. But I send many letters home to parents. Their, their son or daughter has been killed over in the Middle East. For what? For what? There are times to fight, and there are times not to fight. There are times to be smart. Here at home, Bureau of Land Management Acting Director William Perry Pendley recently paid a visit to the U.S.-Mexico border in San Diego. There are four task force southern border barrier project sites throughout Southern California. These projects help secure the border by blocking drug smuggling corridors through the construction of roads and fences and the installation of lighting. Pendley received briefings and met with construction managers and senior project officials for updates in the status of progress. San Diego 4, as we call it, will we'll extend on the secondary fence that we're standing at right here, and as well as the primary fence. We'll just extend it east up over the hill where the primary will connect into A1, which we constructed back in about 2009, 2008, somewhere in there. Pindley said he learned a lot during the trip, noting that how seeing everything firsthand allowed for better understanding and perspective on measures he may have to pass along to stakeholders. Protecting this country doesn't just stop at the borders. It goes into the cyber world. All throughout October, the military is highlighting National Cyber Awareness Month, showing how service members work to secure vulnerable systems and fight back to keep our networks safe. So cybersecurity is embedded in every aspect of our lives today. Um, there's new cyber threats by the minute, and we need to find ways to push along our missions to more efficiently do our jobs, but in a secure manner. If we fail to do so, then the, the results could be a catastrophic. So the first thing we, um, we need to do is make sure that even our general population is very aware of it. And they're taking cybersecurity into account as they're doing their jobs. There's a double-edged sword with cyber tools they provide efficiency and doing things faster, but they also can create vulnerabilities. So we need to take both of those into account um, as we move forward. It's most common for people not to take it serious enough. And here at the base, one of the, the, the biggest potential violations and things we look for all together is 
federal regulations in reference to, for instance, PII, Privacy Act of 1974, and Freedom of Information Act, and things of that sort. And there's actually new legislation that's coming out. Um, I was in D.C. not too long ago, and there was quite a few people talking about the legislation in reference to um, our right to privacy as citizens. So the legislation will require individuals to take certain due diligence steps. So that means having antivirus, and maybe not just on your computer, but our cell phones, because they're basically complex computers today. And, and we have to make sure that they're patched regularly. You'll have a hard time identifying an element of your life that doesn't have a cyber aspect to it. So you, um, with you having a baseline knowledge of its importance and handling it in uh, a um, wise manner, I, th I think that that's, that'll be critical for you. Because if you're one of the uh, unlucky individuals who gets their information stolen, um, it can negatively impact your life. The protection and maintenance of cyber systems is essential to mission accomplishment. The 103rd Air Control Squadron in Connecticut does just that and provides the nation with several critical capabilities, including air battle management, radar surveillance, and air space control. We are a tactical squadron that brings out all the vital essentials to control air traffic, uh, the scopes, radar, SATCOM equipment, uh, we deploy it. My main job here is to make sure that the equipment is running for the operators that operate out of those scopes and control the aircraft. We also integrate ourselves with the greater picture. The whole military does, joint exercises. We share information with our other veteran services. Everybody is connected. And if one link in that chain is compromised, then cascading effect, unfortunately, can occur to the other members that we are joined with. That is why cybersecurity is so vital. We have to be sort of on top of it. Any kind of vulnerabilities that all of a sudden come about, we need to sort of be very proactive in curtailing that. With the ACS, we make sure that the air power goes to where it needs to be. You start seeing the bigger picture in that. We had the equipment up and running that helps out so many layers beyond us for a greater cause. But innovations don't just stop in the cyber world. Reservists at the 302nd Airlift Wing's metal shop manufacture C-130 Hercules aircraft parts to minimize the impact on training and flying operations. The creative solution helps reduce the time it would take to repair and maintain the aircraft. As far as the um, aircraft, if we can't procure a part, there's no way to get here, they say, the part's going to be 16 weeks out. We can manufacture that part in, say, three days and get the aircraft back up and flying. If we have to manufacture a part, the part needs to be made to a certain standard. So those tolerances, left to right, plus 100 thousandths of an inch, we have to obey and make sure that we are within that criteria to make the part good. If we avoid that, go over that tolerance, the part is not up to quality. So quality plays a big part in our shop and if you blow it, just start over. You have to start over and that integrity plays a big role in this shop. There's nothing that we can't build from just a chunk of metal. The things that we can do, the tolerances we can take and make things that are unreal, clocks, things that work in sync with each other and the welding part of it, the computer generated milling, the uh, lathe, just taking raw material and looking at that finished product is pretty unique. After the break, it was one of the deadliest attacks in the history of the U.S. Marine Corps, how those affected are remembering more than three decades later. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. 
I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Welcome back. October 23rd marked 36 years ago that the world woke to the news of terrorist bombing attacks against U.S. Marines in Lebanon. The barracks bombings claimed the lives of 241 Marines. Marines and family members affected by the attack visited Marine Corps Recruit Depot Paris Island on the eve of the anniversary of the attacks to share their story with a new generation of Marines. I know there are no words that can express our sorrow and grief over the loss of those splendid young men and the injury to so many others. I know there are no words also that can ease the burden of grief for the families of those young men. Then the blast came and actually picked me up at a metal desk I was sitting at. And I was in a chair similar to this and blown across the wall in midair, the whole desk, me, the chair, everything. Um, it was horrible. You know, maimed, injured, and uh, missing limbs. Just when there was no longer walking wounded, I went down there and started digging people out, which, uh, as many as I could. The worst part was hearing them scream for help and you couldn't get to them. Just couldn't get to them. And <clears throat> soon after, you know, there were no more screams for help. Looking at some of these young Marines that, you know, I'm around every day and I knew they were over there. I mean, it, it was it was chaos, really, in a way for me, it was chaos. Um, you know, I was looking at the news and I'm sitting, listening to more bodies being pulled out and they had the count kept going up. I had to turn it off. And I just couldn't take it anymore, I had to turn it off. And that's one of the things that bothered me for a long time too, is just knowing that this happened you know, in this place that I was at one time, 
with Marines I knew and Marines that are over there now that I know. I was supposed to be in the barracks, um, but they sent me to the Iwo Jima to work combat cargo on the 16th, exactly almost to the minute one week prior. So the guy who was sleeping in my cot in that building is no longer with us. Um, we only had one survivor out of our room and uh, he was in the cot that was next to me. So on combat cargo, we got the, the alert for emergency medevac. We come to the flight deck and we can still see the cloud. We know where the building is. We can always see the building and the building's not there, but there's a big cloud. And uh, <clears throat> that's when we found out that it had been blown up. Or that the news released that it was the, the barracks and it was the Marines. I, I was nervous, but I knew he would be okay. So they had given me the call from home that he didn't make it. So I was in shock. And then I, um, I was packing up because I wanted to go home, I wanted to go home, I wanted to go home. He loved his brothers in the Marines. He would have given his right arm and his whole life for them. I know that. It's, it's like you have a family member, you know, a brother or sister, and you are on the other side of the country, and you're calling them every day, but you know, you know, you know they are over there, and if, if something happened to them, you feel as though if you were there, that wouldn't have happened. It's not that we wear these vests the, you know, show the we're big bad Marines, wear these vests and let everybody know what happened and never forget it. Up next, how one woman fought her way to the top of the U.S. Air Force and what major health challenges she overcame to do so. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead, just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us?
Thanks for staying with On the Home Front. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Senior Master Sergeant Amber Robbins shares her story about her fight with breast cancer and her journey to the top of the U.S. Air Force Enlisted Force. She says it takes courage to face our fears, the faith to believe, and the hope for what the future holds. The room was packed and, uh, man, it was, uh, it was the one day uh, I gave myself to just realize, holy smokes, um, they're here for me. They're not here because I told them to. They're not here because it's, you know, it's an order. They came because they want to be part of this, my cancer journey. Um, but part of my life. Well, I was diagnosed on uh, 27 October 2017. Um, I actually had originally found my lump in May of 17, but I kept putting it off because it just had to be something else. But in the back of my mind, um, the cancer word is there. Uh, it's, it's hidden away and it's uh, hidden by the word called fear. First day I was told, um, I sulked that night um, because it, it changes your whole entire world. Um, but then the next day you gotta choose. I chose to, to fight and I chose to be, to be there whenever I could be there, I was gonna be there. Did it, absolutely, did I struggle every day? Yes, I did. Um, but I have kids, I have a husband, I have airmen, um, I have pets, you know, that rely on me. And um, if I can push it through and if they can see how strong their, their mom is or, you know, my husband's wife, um, if my airmen see, then maybe that will show someone that you can pull the positive out of something so extremely negative and so extremely hard. I wanted everyone to see it. I wanted, if I can help some airman down the road that is diagnosed with cancer, and then think about the senior master sergeant who rocked their bald head at my night air force base, then uh, maybe I could be their hope. Man, um, overwhelmed, overwhelmed, excited, uh, probably were the two, the, the two biggest emotions that I felt because I couldn't believe that it, I'm gonna cry, couldn't believe that it happened. Um, it's truly amazing to come out on top when you've had a year of struggle, um, a year of not knowing a year of um, pretty much fighting for my life. The one thing I have realized through this journey is that people will be there for you that want to be there for you, no matter what. And it may not be the people that you expect, but they want to be there for you out of the goodness of their heart. And you have to let them in. You're not alone. There is somebody that is going through the exact same thing or something similar um, to what you're going through. We are so much stronger than we give our, our, ourselves credit for because we can do amazing things. We'll just say cancer free. We'll say cancer free and yeah. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after the break. When I came to Regent University, it's like the world opened up. I felt like I needed to advance my career and go back to school. Regent was a perfect fit for me. The Regent professors are world class. You are equipped. The focus of the faculty is on each individual student, whether it's online or in person. You become a part of Regent's family. You carry with you not just the content and the knowledge, but the confidence to understand that we can be significant in the world. Regent University. Follow your path.
Nigerian Christians are Christians being Christians in Iran are routinely arrested Nepali because Christians of their continue to suffer. In times of trial and affliction, you need to know the truth. One of the fastest growing Christian populations in the world. Join Wendy Griffith and George Thomas for Christian World News. Young people are the ones who are open to the gospel. Powerful stories of suffering and hope that affect all Christians. Watch Christian World News, Saturday at 5 p.m. Get Protect Your Sleep and discover how to improve the quality of your life. A free DVD or booklet from the Christian Broadcasting Network. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Five leading experts help remove the obstacles between you and restorative sleep. When you don't get a restful night's sleep, you wake up with an accumulation of stress. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet today. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. You'll discover how food affects your sleep, how to put insomnia to rest, explore effective remedies for sleep apnea, and much more in Protect Your Sleep. Wake up to your best life and get Protect Your Sleep today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet. CBN News, no filter, 24-7 news. Through the lens of faith, from natural disasters to breaking news in the Holy Land, we have access to stars in entertainment and to top newsmakers. We are fighting for your freedoms. CBN News, because truth matters. Become a CBN News member today. Welcome back to On the Home Front. Last year, the Defense Department launched a new initiative called This Is Your Military to highlight the work of service members. The initiative also has the goal of debunking myths about military service and increasing awareness among the American people. Using the hashtag KnowYourMill, the DOD is sharing personal stories to inspire others. Through mindfulness and resiliency classes, Chaplain Arun Sita works to help those struggling with suicidal thoughts, PTSD, stress, and anxiety, or those who are just looking for a way to wind down after a long work day. That's a moment, a present moment. That's my My name is Chaplain like. Arun Sita. I'm Lieutenant Commander in the United States Navy. I work as religious ministry department head as a clinical chaplain. Before I joined the Navy, I'm full-time a Buddhist monk. The one thing that is important of uh, what I learned from the temple is how to be centered, how to be mindful, and how to ground myself. When I saw the soldier, marines, sailor, and airmen that had to go through a difficult time, mindfulness meditation is one of the tools that I has been used for a long, long time. And I believe this is really uh, something that can help them. That's all for today, but you can find more of our exclusive news coverage at cbnnews.com. Hope you'll join us next time. Have a great day.